I wasn't planning on uh, doing this, but I came across it and I was going to keep it for myself. I meant a copy of it to keep with me. Just some scriptures. But I want to read them uh, as we get started because it goes along with the Bible lesson today. Week before last, we started a Bible, I think it was week before last, around the 21st or something. Uh, we were teaching on how he, then he opened up their understanding. We didn't get to finish that. I thought about finishing it Thursday, but I had another thought on my mind for the Bible study. But this morning we're going to try and finish that. Well, we're going to get back into it. I was noticing this morning as I was studying, going over uh, the scriptures, I couldn't finish it today either. Probably couldn't finish it in two more weeks. But we're going to get back into it this morning. But then I, I happened to come across this, and I, I, I really, really liked it. And, it. and it will go along with our Bible lesson too. It's found in the book of Psalms, chapter 51. Psalms chapter 51. What a chapter. <laughs> what a chapter. Amen. And we're going to read verses 1 through 15. I'm sorry, 1 through 17. Amen. And I hope all that will be listening uh, on YouTube and maybe Facebook that uh, they will listen to these also and listen to this Bible lesson. You know, God, if God doesn't open up your understanding, it's not going to get opened. Man can't do that. It takes God. But let me read these, then we'll get into it. Psalm 51 and 1. Now this, uh, keep in mind too, let's say this. The old psalmist David, now most people know he, he loved God. He believed God. Amen. A man after God's own heart. But David made mistakes. And David had a, had a problem. Uh, he wanted understanding too. So just listen to this. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According, it says, unto the multitude of thy mercies, blot out my transgressions. So even, even David here is asking God to blot out or forgive, remove. Can you say amen? Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions. My sin is ever before me. How many people do that? They're concerned about my sin and your sin. They never get around to acknowledging their sin. And it says, my sin is ever before me. How many people can say that? I, don't, I think they want to forget their sin or ignore it. That doesn't take it away. It's got to be repented of, dealt with. It's got to be acknowledged. Against thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. <laughs> Behold, he's saying, because of what he's done and the things, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. In other words, he's talking about he's in the flesh. He's still contending with the flesh up until this point. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. <clears throat> Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. I'm going to use these scriptures here in the future again and teach uh, along these lines. What a prayer. What a prayer. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not my Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me, restore. 
He had to have had it first. <laughs> and even to go back to the what we've been teaching on this, even to Adam. See, Adam was right with God to start with, man was. But when man sinned, it separated him from God. And so we can look at this in two ways. One from our transgressions and sin, and the other from what we were when we were created. Restore unto me. Amen. How many, how many likes these scriptures? Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and, re, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy way. See, you can't teach, and I'm going to we'll get into this later, you can't teach other people about their transgressions until you ask God to forgive you of yours. Amen. Then, amen? Oh, there's so much in this. I come across it this morning. I, I wanted to stay on this, but I've got to finish this other one too. Hey, then will I teach transgressors Amen. Thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. You can't convert anyone until you're converted. Deliver me from blood guiltness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, this is the part of going along with what we're going to be teaching on. O Lord, open thou my lips and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou, de for thou desirest not sacrifice, else I would give it. Thou, de de thou de delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God, or sacrifices of God, are a broken spirit, and a broken and contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. Isn't that wonderful? My Lord, that, I read them, I said, man, that, it just really stirred me uh, this morning and got me thinking. And I, I, I printed, I printed me out a copy to keep in my Bible. Printed me out a copy for the office. I printed me out another copy, another copy, Amen, for the home. Cause I'm with them around me. I want to read them often. I want to ask God, Lord, create in me a right spirit, a clean heart. Forgive me of my transgressions, Amen. We've been teaching about how God has to open up your understanding. And week before last, we started out in the book of, uh, I think we started out in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And we read there where Paul is telling us, amen, that uh, a man can't know the things of a man unless he has the spirit of man in him. And he said, likewise, neither can a man know the things of God save the Spirit of God that is in him. Yes. So there's, you can have an understanding of natural things, fleshly things, but that doesn't make, uh, give you the ability to understand the spiritual things that are of God or the Word of God. You have to have the Spirit of God in you in order to understand this, what Paul was saying to the Corinthian church. Now, if Paul was teaching this 2,000 years ago to the Corinthian church, then it's still good today for the church of Jesus Christ in 2021. You cannot, there's, there's thousands, probably millions of people out there, no doubt millions of people out there that own Bibles. They don't all own the, the good old original version, the King James Version, but they have a Bible. But even the ones that have the King James Version of the Bible, just owning the Bible, having one at home and at church and in the car, amen, reading it every day, is not going to give you understanding that we're talking about today. Amen? amen? Because if, they don't, if they're not born again of the water and the Spirit... Amen. And they not uh, repented of their sins, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, filled with the Holy Ghost, which is, that's included, they can't be born again. And without being born again and having the Holy Ghost in them, they cannot and will not ever understand the Scriptures. It, it's impossible. The Bible teaches that. Now, you don't hear that being taught a lot out there, 
Oh, everybody's encouraged to read the Bible. Read your Bible. We've even done that. Read your Bible. Study. You can read your Bible. You can study. But if you don't have the Holy Ghost inside you, you're not going to understand all that you're reading. Amen. I've said years ago, I remember it coming to my mind, now you, anybody can pick up the Bible and, and read there and start in Genesis wherever they want, but we'll just go to Genesis and you can figure out, well, God made the world. Yeah, it says that real clear there. You can figure out about Adam and the woman in the garden. Of course, some people can't even figure that one out. They still got Adam and Eve in the garden, but there was no such thing really. Uh, they read all over about the name, how God called their name Adam. They read that, but they don't understand either. But they do understand about Adam and the garden. And the natural man can go on and read, and he can find out about Noah and the ark. But he can't understand about the ark being a type of the church. And all, all the, the whole family in the ark was a one name. <laughs> they don't see that. You know why? Because they don't have the Holy Ghost. Amen. Somebody can tell them that, but they still don't get a revelation. They don't put it all together. I'm just trying to lay a little groundwork this morning as we get into this again. Amen. That you cannot, you cannot bypass being saved and understanding Scripture. It, it's not going to happen. Now, you can understand enough, amen, to where you believe there's God. I touched on this last Sunday. Uh, you can believe enough that measure of faith that God gives every human being. He gives us a measure of faith. And you can take that measure of faith and hear enough to know if you believe in God, amen, that you have to, you have to repent. You have to change your ways. Amen? But when it comes to the doctrine and the deeper things of God, you'll never see that. And I'm going to prove to you by the scriptures, and some of you already know this, that God did that. Amen. God calls, the, I believe the Bible terms, a deep sleep to come upon them. So they couldn't see it. Why? Because they wouldn't obey what they were seeing. God even, God even closed the eyes of the seer. Now the seer is just the prophet's because the prophets were able to see these things that God was showing them and pass it on to the people, so they were called seers. God even closed the eyes of the seers that wouldn't preach the truth. When you reject truth, my friend, and you reject uh, when somebody's teaching you and preaching you, God's not going to give you no more. You're not going anywhere with the Lord. In fact, He'll take away even what you have. Amen. So, as we, we touched on Nehemiah chapter 8, a uh, week before last, and if you, if you remember there in Nehemiah, they made the pulpit, and they got the, the law of Moses out, and they, they got up and began to read distinctly from the scriptures there. And then the Bible says it, it expounded to them uh, very clearly, made them to understand the scriptures. See, God wants us to know the scriptures. He wants us to have understanding, but you're only going to get it the way He wants you to have it. And, he, and the only ones He's going to give it to, He said, when you hunger and thirst for righteousness, then you'll be filled. A lot of people want to know Scripture so they can argue with it. I don't want to argue with anyone about it. I want God to show me, amen, where I can help somebody else. And I want God to show them something where they can show me. Nothing wrong with that. But in Nehemiah, man, them people stood there in the gate there, in that raw gate, and they, they listened uh, for hours. And they rejoiced. Yeah. Amen. Then we went to St. John 7, we went to St. John 8, and St. John 12, and we showed you. We're not going to cover all them today. We're going to get, I want to start here in Luke. We, we touched on Luke, but I want to open up with Luke. Luke chapter 24. Now it's good to preach the gospel. It's good, amen, to be able to uh, do that. And it's a little different than it is teaching, but we need teaching of the Word of God. We need Bible studies. 
Luke 24 and verse 44 and 45. And I'll say this before we read this, just by way of remembrance, and for especially today, all of them that be listening, amen, by whatever means they hear this. God, I said earlier, God wants them to understand. But you're not going to get it your way and the way you want it. If you're not honest and sincere in heart and you're not willing to make changes in your life and in your doctrine, why would God reveal anything to you? People can try and preach to you, try and bring it to you, but if your heart's not right with God, you're going to say, I, I don't believe that. I, I can't see that. Well, you're the very one that God needs to open up your understanding that you might understand the scriptures. Luke 24, 44 and 45. And he said, Jesus Christ now, and he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me, Jesus Christ said. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And I don't think I said this last Sunday. We had to remember that the scriptures he's talking about right now in this particular verse were Old Testament scriptures. He, the church come into existence and they've just gotten the Holy Ghost and the church is getting going. Amen. They didn't even have the New Testament written, Brother Jay. There was no New Testament they only had the, the Old Testament scriptures. So when you see scriptures, that includes both old and new. There's a lot of people out there, I've said it before and I'll say it again, they don't, want, they don't want much to do with the Old Testament. Big mistake. Amen. They, they well, it's, uh, I don't understand it. Uh, well, if you pray and ask God, he'll give you understanding if your heart is right. Do you know how many people out there today church in this world, all worldwide, amen, they pray. Some of them put us to shame. They pray. And they read the scriptures, putting us to shame. I'll, I'll say it like that. Amen? But you know what the problem is? This heart's not right. They've been brought up in a doctrine, in a religion, in a faith, in an organization and they're, they're, they're more into that than they are in just obeying God. They've accepted what they've been told by man instead of what God has actually told them. And they refuse anything else, it seems like. Now, we've, we've quoted a lot from the New Testament. We read some from the Old earlier, but I want to go back to the Old Testament now. In Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4. I'm, I don't think I used this week before last. I may have, but if I did, well, we'll use it again to get us going here. Exodus chapter 4. We're going to be, be reading chapter or verse 10 and verse 12. And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord. See, God had called Moses to go down into Egypt. How many knows that? And he's got a message for him to give to Pharaoh. Does he not? <laughs> Amen. Now he says, Moses said, Lord, oh my Lord, I, I'm not eloquent. Neither for nor since Thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech, and of a slow tongue. In other words, I'm not good at this. I'm not a good speaker. I'm not an eloquent, edu educated, whatever. In other words, he's trying to make excuses for just listening and obeying the Lord. Yes. Now, how many of you, amen, or us, I'll say us, I'm trying to get to break, my, break myself of that habit, us. How many of us, amen, in times past, when we feel or 
the Lord is dealing with us to do something or change something, amen, we want to act like we don't know what's going on. That's a no-no with the Lord. That's not good in the sight of God. Moses, let's, let's see, that's why I like to analyze. I hope that that is the right word for this. I use it a lot. If it ain't, I guess you can tell me. But I like to look at a scripture and not just read it, but I like to go back and read it several times. I like to analyze that scripture, dig into it. Amen. Now notice here, Moses is trying to tell the Lord that I'm elegant. I'm not eloquent, and I'm slow. Didn't he realize that God already knows that? <laughs> You're trying to tell the Lord something. He, he made you. He done searched you out. He knows everything about you before he even called you to do this job. And now you're going to try and give me an excuse that maybe I've missed? It doesn't make sense. There's a lot of preachers out there today. They need to stop where they're at, right in their tracks, so to speak, and understand, now what God is trying to tell me, I'd best listen. And not try to tell him something he already knows. Or try to tell him something, amen, that I believe, but it's wrong. Just listen to God. Listen to the voice of God. Oh Lord, he said, oh Lord, or said unto the Lord, oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither hitherfore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. In other words, even before you dealt with me, talked to me, I've always been this way, Lord. <laughs> Lord's probably thinking, who, who do you think I am? Do you know who I am? Apparently not, because if you knew that I was the almighty God, and I know everything and see everything, you wouldn't be telling me this. See, sir, it's like David, and it's like Moses, and it's like a lot of the others. Amen. Until we get our heart right, we're just like every other man. There's no change taking place till the new heart's given to you. Talking about the Holy Ghost. Going to church, running to the altar, getting baptized. I will go, I'll go so far to say if I get criticized for it, there's a lot of people, no doubt, in this world, a lot of people that has went to an altar, repented, was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, but hadn't done them any good. Because their heart wasn't right. They just refuse to let go of their former teachings, their former ideas, doctrines. They refuse to give up on it. My family was this, and I'm this. That's your problem. That is our problem. I, I'm a Spence, but I can't remain thinking like the Spence family. I got to come out of that. Hey, he's, he's just a Spence. That's just typical of Spence. Well, that's, that's true. I can't argue with that. The Spence has had some terrible, and still do. A lot of the spirits have some terrible ideas on life and on God. But I can't live like that. When I come to the church and get born again of the one or the spirit, I'm supposed to lay aside all of the, the things that the spirits maybe believed or practiced that was wrong. God didn't I'm going to tell you something, church. God, I'm just using my name, but we can use any of your old name. God didn't bring a Spence into the church so that, the, the, that he could bring the Spence 
ways and dispense his beliefs into the church. He brought a spence into the church to get me out of that and get me into his way. Amen. Amen. That's why we never get finished with these things. We get off into other. But you know what? It's the truth. Now let's read this. And this ought to be an eye opener. And I know you've heard it before. I've probably used this scripture before. But now let's analyze it again. Let's look into it again. He says, So when he said this to the Lord, the Lord said, Who has made man's mouth? But he just, he, just, he just hit him with it right out. Who's made man's mouth? Moses. Who maketh the dumb? You're saying you're, you're not able? Apparently, the Lord, Lord understood him to say, Lord, I'm, I'm too dumb for this. <laughs> Who maketh the dumb? Of course, he's talking about others, not him. Who made the dumb? or the deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? God made them too. That's hard for some people to see the grasp. That's hard for them to accept. But it's Bible. It's Scripture, and it's God doing the talking here. If God said, I made it, then God made it. Well, why would God make somebody like that? Because he's God and he does what he wants. And he don't need to ask you or me what to do or how to do it. And he made them all for a reason. Just like in the beginning, back in Genesis, when he made everything, all of that that he made. One of these days, Lord help me would get into that again. Amen. He made all of that and each, each thing he made had a purpose. When he made the sun, thank God he made the sun. Thank God he made this, the moon, the stars. Thank God he made gravity. Thank God he made oxygen. Thank God he made the trees, the animals. Where would we be if God hadn't created all that? So we're learning from the beginning that when in the beginning, in creation, God was laying down a a format there. He was laying down a structure of something that he's going to follow and we can learn from. That's the way I see it. Amen? So when he made, if he made all of these, the dumb, the blind, uh, and all this, he said, didn't I? It must be a reason. Well, brother, well, what, could, what could that possibly, what good could he get out of that? If God never, and I know this sounds funny, and some of them out there might say, man, that man has, he's lost it. Well, just I'm just reading you what God said. He said, I made it. I'm just trying to expound on a little bit to maybe why did God do that? I'm not questioning God. I want understanding. I want to understand why God made the dumb. Why did he make the deaf, the blind? Well, if he had never made them, what would Jesus Christ been doing all that time when he was healing all the sick and afflicted? Raising up the dead. Huh? Why did he make you the way you are and have some maybe the things you, to, to use to help other people? Everything God does is for us and to help us. Even those animals. Now I know some of you here might be what they call it, vegetarians. Well, now, and that's fine. That's your business. But, you know, when I read the Bible, God made them things for us to eat. He made that apple to eat. But he also made the venison. And the beans. And the onions. The cucumbers. We don't try, church. We, we can't get in here trying to make things the way I want them. The way I see it ought to be. Who are you? Let God do that. I gotta get back to this. 
Who maketh man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore, he said in verse 13, uh, verse 12, now therefore go. In other words, enough of this. <laughs> now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. See, there's a little, a little window uh, that he's starting here that will follow through till the Holy Ghost comes. That will lead us and guide us to all truth. God said, I'm going to be with your mouth and I'm going to teach you what to say. I'll give you what to say. He even tells us that over in the, I think it's in Revelation there, where, amen, don't be worried about when they bring you before their council. And he says, I'll give you what to say. The Holy Ghost will give it to you. See, this all started back here. But people don't ever look at that or think about that. That's why we need our eyes open to the scriptures. I'm telling you, church, as plain as I can, not everybody can pick this up and, and now they can pick it up and they can read it, but they're not going to see into it. They're not going to get anything out of it. Naturally, things they will. Huh? Or the things that they like. Oh, yeah, I see that. What about the things you don't like? <laughs> the things that's easy for you to do to be saved. Oh, praise the Lord. But what about the things that's so hard to give up and to change in your life in order to be saved? You don't see that. Why? Because their heart ain't right. If people would just take that little measure of faith that God has put in every one of us and allow it to lead us to the Lord, your journey can begin. You hear me? In Psalms 119, Psalms 119, I'm going to read a few verses here. Psalms 119. Isn't that one of the biggest chapters in here? Lord, Lord, I think about every, every verse in here, one way or another, talks about the Word. Huh? We're going to start in verse 9 through 19. Now the psalmist says here, Wherewith where shall a young man cleanse his ways? How are you going to clean, cleanse your ways? Now, you can't do that by walking up and shaking the preacher's hand. We've said that for years. You can't do that by just joining a church, putting your name on the church roll. You can't, you can't cleanse your ways, amen, by some preacher laying his hands on you. Lord, take their sin away. That don't work. Come on now. How shall a man, young man, cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Listen, hearing and listening to the word. See, the Bible says in the New Testament that faith comes by hearing. Hearing of the word of God. Now, some people sitting here uh, in the church sometimes, uh, all over the world, they're hearing, but they're not hearing. They're hearing the preacher, they're hearing the the. the the sound that's coming out of his mouth, the words, but they don't hear it. It's not, it's like Thursday night. They didn't find no place in their heart for that for God. They're just going to church. I've got to go to church. I want to be saved. I'm going to church. Where did you get going to church to save you? Now, the Bible teaches us to go to church, but you go to church to get saved. Going to church don't make you saved. He said, By taking heed thereto according to thy word, with my whole heart have I sought thee. With my whole heart. In other words, nothing else matters. Whatever I got to do, I'm going to do. Whatever I got to give up, I'm going to give up. Whatever I got to change, I'm going to change. 
That's my whole, you're just putting your whole heart and soul into this thing. That's what it's going to take. But friend, not everybody's running to the altar and not everybody's sitting in the pew or even on the pulpit or in the pulpit. Not all of them's right with God. They're doing it, been doing it for years. But it's not right with God. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, and listen now. Oh, let me, let me not wonder from thy commandments. <laughs> oh, Lord, let me not wonder. Everybody know what wonder means? Get away from, forget, get off to a different direction, a different doctrine. Don't let me wonder from thy ways. Do you know how many people in this world today have already wandered away from God and still sit in church? Bishop Lee used to tell us long before anybody walked out that door, they used to use the word backslide. I don't like that word. Of course, there's a lot of people doing it. I understand. But God did say, I'm going to heal your backsliding. He told Israel, I still stick with that. Uh, and I know people get out of church, do things. I understand all that. But when somebody is really, really, really converted, huh? Come on now. I don't care what happens. You might get in the biggest trouble you've been in, in your life. But you're not going to leave God. Amen. You're not going to leave the church going to some other doctrine. Because yes. if you do, something wasn't right to start with. I know that irritates people. They don't want to hear it. But it is the truth. A lot of people thought they got saved, but they wasn't saved. Amen. When you get saved, friend, your mind changes too. Oh. oh, let me not wonder from thy commandments. Thy word, listen to this, thy word have I hid in my heart. I've been saying that, haven't I? I've hid it in my heart. It's there. Is, is what we're teaching and preaching, is it in your heart? Or are you just saying, well, I can't argue with it. I, get, yeah, I believe him. Well, that's all good, but church, that's not good enough. It has to get in your heart. And when it gets in your heart, you're going to say, yes, Lord, I'll, I'll, I've got to do it one way or another. I'm going to do it. I'm going to give it up. I'm going to change. I'm going to quit. I, something. When it gets in. But until it gets in your heart, well, the, Lord know, the Lord knows. The Lord understands. See, their speech betrays them. Are you hearing me this morning? Amen. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Thy word. Some of David said, your words, Lord. Your words, God, I've hid in my heart. But today, they have, they've hid things in their heart, but it wasn't from God. It was from their family tradition. Family doctrine. Some other preacher. Some commentary. They read it. Sounds good. Makes sense to the natural man. They take it and they hide that in their heart. God said, I'm going to take that old stony heart out. I'm going to give you a new one. There's a lot of people, Bishop Lee, I think, I've heard others say, a lot of people need a new heart transplant. It's what they need. They need that old heart taken out, Clarence, like you did. I didn't mean he didn't. And God can put a new heart of flesh in there. One that will listen to God. No, I'm not going to finish, I don't think, today. But I'm not done yet, so don't mark that down yet. I haven't even said that one time yet. 
Got that? Okay. Smile. Of course, I can't see you with all them masks on, but hopefully you're smiling. Now, it goes on to say here, now listen to this. Man, I tell you, I love these scriptures. I love them. There's so much wisdom and understanding in them. And that's what we're going to get to. Now, he says, My whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy ways, or from thy word. Or thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statutes. Teach me your word, your ways. A lot of people, church, man, they've got their family's ways and their church's ways, but they don't have God's ways. Big difference. Amen. With my lips, with my lips, have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. Wow. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statues. I will not forget thy word. Deal bountifully with me or with thy servant that I may live. How many wants to live? And keep thy word. I want to live and I want to keep your words. People today just don't want to keep God's words. Amen. Here's what I wanted to get. Open thou my eyes. Isn't that over and over in the Bible? We're not even going to be able to get to all of them today. But he said, open thou my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. I'm a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. See, he's saying, some of David's church is saying that God has to open the eyes. God has to do that. He went on to say here, I'm a stranger in the earth. In other words, I'm, I'm just an ordinary man like everybody else. Amen? But what did he say? Hide not thy commandments. See, in other words, he knows this is hid to a lot of people. But he wants to be able to he wants God to give him his understanding of it. That's right. You can have understanding of a lot of things, but what we really need is the understanding of God, his word, his precepts, his statutes. God only knows how many doctrines are out there in the world. That's theirs. That's not God's. Their, that's their ways. That's their precept. That's how they see it, understand it. Open thou my eyes. Open thou my eyes. Now he's not talking about his natural eyesight. As far as I can know, Psalm of David here can see real good, naturally. He's asking God to open up his eyes of understanding. Has the eyes of your understanding been open? Or do you just think they have? Come on, church. Isaiah 29. Isaiah chapter 29. Oh, thank God for Scripture. Isaiah chapter 29, we're going to read verses 10 through 14. Everybody there say amen. Isaiah said, For the Lord has hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. How many preachers you hear today talking about the spirit of deep sleep? I really can't. I, I, you know, Bishop Lee, I think, they used to talk, teach on a lot, a lot, but I haven't heard anybody wherever I go or in, anywhere bring this up too much. Well, if the Bible says that there is one, well, then there has to be one. 
There's a spirit of deep sleep in this world. Where did it come from? For the Lord has poured out upon you. Now this is Isaiah talking to Israel. The ones that God has called. I believe there's a lot of people out there in the oneness organization that God, God loves them, God has called them, but their eyes have not been opened yet to a lot of things. For the Lord has poured upon you, God poured this on you, or put this on you, the spirit of deep sleep, and has closed your eyes. How many is listening out there today? Has closed your eyes. Well, I don't think that's happened to me. Well, you might want to pray about it. You might want to give it some more thought. You might want to see if your ways and your precepts and your understanding is matching up with God's. And if it doesn't match up, you've got a spirit of deep sleep on you. Amen. He said, the prophets, listen now, the prophets and your rulers, the seers, has he clothed, uh, covered. Why? Because they're out there. It got to where, man, Israel had false prophets out there. They prophesied lies, prophesying their own things in their heart. God even closed the eyes of, of the seers. My goodness. If God can and has closed the eyes of these people back then, don't you understand that he can do the same thing and is today? He's closing people's eyes. He will not let them go no further. He won't let them see nothing else because they're rejecting what he's already trying to give them. That's scary for any preacher out there, myself included. If you don't walk in what God reveals to you and shows you, amen, or, or has somebody show you and he reads it to you and right there it is. It's like that lady that, that was reading Acts 2.38 and saying Jesus' name. You couldn't see it. I, I had her, I've said this so many times, I had her read it three times out of her own Bible. Finally, after I told her, I stopped, what did you say? I said, what does that say? Don't quit it. Don't just quote it from what's in your mind. Quote it from what's written in the scripture. She read it again. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, not Jesus' name. Now, some of you know this, but some don't. She goes like this. Well, isn't that a kick? Twenty-some years in church. She's just now realizing Acts 2.38 says Jesus Christ instead of Jesus' name. If that's not blind, I don't know what is. If your understanding, and she was in this one the church, one this church for years, but I can tell you right now, she said in that church all them years, but her understanding hadn't been open to Acts 2.38, and it's, it's supposedly an Acts 2.38 church. But then I found out later they was, they was preaching that Christ is not part of the name. So if the church is teaching that Christ is just a title, it's not part of Jesus, is the only name. See, she was blinded. Oh, Lord, help us. Has closed your eyes, the prophets and your rulers, the seer, hath he covered. Listen now. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Can God make it any clearer? Huh? When he put this spirit of deep sleep on Israel... And we're God's people today. 
And God, Jesus Christ, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changes not. His ways are the same. What makes you think God won't do that to people today? Well, he will, and he is. He has blinded the eyes of a lot of people. And uh, he says, uh, And the vision of all has become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned and educated, and saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. It's sealed. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I'm not learned. You know, you've got a lot of people, church, in this world, and one is churches, all churches, that are not learned, but they're up in the pulpit trying to learn everybody else. See, I know I say things sometimes that irritates me. I don't mean to irritate. I want, to, I want to, something to click there. Saying, I am, I am not learned. Wherefore, the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me. And God knows we've got millions of people doing that. But, but have removed their heart far from me. They've removed their heart far from me. Church, you can pray and you can pray all you want. You can pray as loud as you want. You can run all over this church with your hands in the air. Amen. But if your heart's not right with God, it's not doing you a bit of good. And that is not the Holy Ghost doing it. Amen. It's not. I am not learned. Some people, I've, I've run into them, they think because they see a congregation, man, they're just a shout. I, I was watching a YouTube thing. I get on there a lot. To, I try to find out what's going on in the world and what some of these doctrines are and teachings. And I'm seeing this church, and it's a oneness type church. Man, they say, and they're titling it, uh, the Holy Ghost Moving Service. So I clicked on it. I, I'm, uh, what's that? I mean, I'm one of them that inquiry minds need to know. <laughs> the Holy Ghost moving service. So I click on it. Man, them people are going to town. But then when you dig and find out what they really believe, well, that, that ain't what the Bible says. And then you see them doing, now listen close, doing and acting in a way that you don't see the early church doing in the Bible. It's not there. I, I've looked. They didn't act like that. If they didn't act like that, why are you? I know I'm getting myself in trouble. <laughs> but until somebody, and if somebody shows me different, I'll get right up here in this pulpit and I'll say, now church, or anywhere else they want me to, and say, I was wrong. There it is. So, we have young people like ours growing up in churches thinking, well, that's what you do. That's, that's Bible. Well, somebody show me. Amen. Yeah. You want the truth, don't you? Oh, he says, I'm not learned. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart, their heart from me, and their fear, now listen to this, and their fear toward me <laughs> is taught by the precept of men. Their precept, 
their, their, I guess their understanding, their, the way they see this. It's taught by the precept of men, not God, not the Word. Man has taught them this is what you do. Man has taught them this is how you do it. And so they do it. What it boils down to is they've gotten more faith in these men than they do in God and His Word. Now, if a man of God is telling you the Scriptures and reading it to you from the Scripture, you'd best listen to it. But them that's not, you need to get away from them. That's right. Fourteen. Therefore, here's the conclusion. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, <laughs> even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent, of the, their prudent men shall be hid. God said, I'm going to do a wonderful, wonderful work among these people for what they're doing. I'm going to take away what wisdom they do have. And the wise men, they're not going to be wise no more. You don't want that, church. We don't want that. Amen. Back in the New Testament. Acts 16. Acts chapter 16, verses 13 through 15. <clears throat> and on the Sabbath day, I'm sorry, on the Sabbath, we went out of the city <clears throat> by a riverside and were where prayer was wrought to be made. I touched on this last week, a uh, week before last. And we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted there. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of, if I'm pronouncing that right, which, now listen to this, which worshiped God. Now if this woman can worship God, in this condition, then anybody today can be, and all these people that's worshiping God, it is possible for a lot of them to be in the same shape that she's in. Which worship God heard us, whose heart the Lord opened. So she's worshiping God before the Lord had opened up her understanding of this. There's a lot of people out there worshiping God. But they're worshiping God in error. They're worshiping God in the way they perceive. The way they've been taught or understood it to be. Not God's way. Somewhere, church, they've got to get to where God can open up their understanding. And believe me, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, I don't know, I'm not saying I know everything. My Lord, I, I know very little. Because this, this is a big Bible. There's more truth in there than I'll ever probably be. understand. But bless God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach what He does give me to understand. I want more understanding. And that's all I'm saying. I'm not trying to tell all of you you're all crazy and dumb and I'm the only one who knows it. No, I'm just saying I'm trying to bring it to our attention that everybody needs to look into this again. They need to look, read these scriptures again with the right attitude and pray that God will open their eyes and their understanding. And on the Sabbath, verse 13 to 15, and on the Sabbath we went out of the city uh, by a river where prayer was wrought to be made. And we sat down, and you'll never persuade me anything different. God led them out there where they were at to be teaching and preaching to get this woman's eyes, our heart, open to the word. And spake unto the women which resorted there. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Triton, 
which worship God heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended, she attended unto the thing which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If we have, if ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained them. See, here was a woman, no doubt a good woman, and she worked with the Lord the best she could, the only way she knew how. God saw something in her. God led the, the, the disciples out there where they were at and had them teaching and preaching. And then God moved upon her. I don't know about all the others, but he moved upon her and opened up her heart that she understood. And what? And when she was baptized at her house, so that tells me, man, they must have been preaching a good evangelistic message. Because she said, man, I'm going to get baptized in my house. I didn't know that. I had never seen that. Oh, thank you, Lord. If people would just come back down to earth and recognize, okay, Lord, if I'm wrong in anything that I'm believing or teaching, Lord, if you can use the word, please, let me know. Lord, open up to me. Open up my heart. And if you'll open my heart up, God, to your word, and it goes against everything that I stand for, I'll change it. I believe God will do that. If God sees and knows you're willing to change your thoughts and your heart, your ways, he'll help you. But if he knows before he even tells you anything, they're not going to change. Why would God do that? Why would God move then? He told us that our word, it's not going to go into vain. It'll accomplish that word he it, and it will. And the, and the Bible also tells us for us not to, uh, you know, cast our pearls before the swine. Rather, well, they'll just eat them, trample them under their feet, and go on their way. So God's not going to open up anybody's understanding, their mind, their heart. Well, he knows they're not going to do anything with it. They might say, oh, yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> they leave church and just continue on what they've been in. God's not, God is smarter than that. I said, God's smarter than that. Acts 26. Acts 26. Verse 12 through 18. Nothing new. These are scriptures you've all read. But we're just trying to pick out a little bit more out of them. That's why sometimes, church, when you get a... How many of you ever had a contract buying a house or whatever? Uh, deed. Sometimes people have to go get a lawyer. They hire a lawyer to go over that contract because it's so complicated, so hard to understand. All this legal stuff... We don't understand half the words anyhow. So you need somebody that can look into that and tell you, to, wait a minute, here's something, you don't want this. Yeah. Well, that's all we're trying to do with the Scriptures. Get into the Scriptures, amen, and, and let's go down them and, and let's find out, with the help of the Lord, what's for us, what's good, and what ain't. 12 to 18, we're upon... As I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest. At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven. A light from heaven. I don't think we're going to see any light from down below. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven. The spirit comes down. <laughs> I seen a light from heaven. This light come down. Amen. Above the brightness of the sun. Above. That means, I would think, brighter than the sun. Man, that must have been some light. Huh? Shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were, when we were all fallen to the earth, 
I heard a voice speaking to me, saying uh, in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecute, persecutest thou me? It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Now here's Saul, which is a prime example of what we're saying. He believes in God. In his own way, he loves God. He's wanting to work for God. He's wanting to do something for their Lord. But he don't know who God really is. He doesn't know God's ways. When he would go into those homes and, and get these people and drag them out and take them to prison or beat them, whatever, you know, he, he's thinking he's doing God's will. When you find people that think they're doing God's will, it's hard to change a person like that. That's why there's this one group of people, I, you, can, you can beat your head against a wall, you ain't going to get them changed. Well, that's good if it's the truth, but what if it's not the truth? Huh? And it says, and I said, who art thou, Lord? This is Saul. Later become the great Apostle Paul. Who art thou, Lord? He didn't know. In other words, he didn't have an understanding of who the Lord... No wonder the Lord would ask him sometimes, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Well, Peter, well, some say you're this, some of the prophets, some this. He said, well, who do you say I am? Well, he said, thou art the Christ, <clears throat> the Son of the living God. Well, he said, blessed art thou, Simon of Arjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed that unto you. <clears throat> you see, church, what I'm talking about with this understanding, flesh and blood can't do it. An organization can't do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, false doctrine can't do it. False preacher. It takes God to open up your understanding. And I don't care how many billions of people are in the world. They ain't a one of them going to get the understanding of God unless they turn to God and ask and are sincere in heart. That's why this world is in the shape that it's in. That's why there's so many doctrines, beliefs. Amen. They're all believing what somebody else taught them, not God. We've got to come out of that. God didn't just want a spence in the church. He didn't just want a Rogers in the church. Or a Wardarski. He wanted a new creature born again of water and the Spirit in the church. And for Spence and Wardarski and Rogers has to be put aside. That's right. Bishop Lee one time, I remember him teaching, just come to my mind. He's talking about how children take on their parents' appearance a lot of times. He was talking about Jarrett in the back of his head. He said, You Jarrett looks just like you from the back of his head, his head and neck. Uh, of course Jarrett was younger then. He may have changed a little bit now, I don't know, but Kids do take on their parents' look sometimes. Yeah, I can see the Rogers in them. Right, Madison? I can see the Rogers or the Pole or something there. Uh, a little bit of both, maybe. Amen. That's not offensive. That's just the way it is. The last time I was, I think it was down home, I think it was, and then my kids, I think, noticed it or had a picture and showed my, my grandfather when he was young. Man, you hold that, you remember that, huh? You can hold that picture of him up and hold, picture of me. You'd think it was the same guy, just a little older maybe. You take on those. Well, that's fine. 
But when it comes to God, he said, you must be born again. And this time when you're born, you take on the likes of Jesus Christ. And you'll talk more like him. Act more like him. And Spence will be out of the picture and Rogers and Wodarski's and whoever else is in here. Why the word of God is so strong and powerful in truth that even the hall will fade off into the distance. And the new Gerald Praise Him. Aren't you glad that God can change you? I'm talking about the heart. Yeah, he still looks like Gerald. But he's a new Gerald. Thank the Lord. I might still look like a Spence in some ways. But I've been born again. Hallelujah. I'm going to close here a little bit. I don't want to keep us too long today. We want to have a we want to have some songs. Who knows? God might open up somebody's heart this morning. You might say, wow. They showed a thing one time and this person couldn't hear. Never been able to hear. I'm not sure what and all they've done, but they did something in there. And, and they did this with a blind person too one time. And they showed they had them filming it the first time they heard a voice, heard their mother or somebody talking. And they wept. Finally could see, could hear. Wouldn't you like to finally, finally be able to get off to yourself somewhere and open up the Bible there and begin reading it and see things you hadn't seen? Wow, I never thought about that. You read another scripture. No, now I get it. Well, God can do that for you. Now you can... You can do all you want. You can read all these other books and listen to all these preachers if you want to. But you're not going to get that. To get that, it has to come from up there. 